Good morning from uh, rainy New York City. I'm going to do an example out of classical mechanics. You need to have covered uh, kinematics and all the stuff we've covered before. Uh, if you had an idea of tension, normal, weight and friction, that's the level you should have got to. I won't need any of those things in this example though. And if you've covered Lagrange's equations, that will be useful part for part two. If you haven't covered Lagrange's, Lagrange's equations, then you can just look at part one of this little talk. What we're going to do is Atwood's machine and show how it can be manipulated to do more complicated, into more complicated guises. For example, this is the way Atwood's machine looks in its simplest form. We have a pulley, could have a mass M, a radius R, or it could be a massless pulley made out of styrofoam. Two masses are hanging on it and they're free to move like this. Now the ropes do not slip. That's an important idea. If the ropes slip, there's a different uh, component to be dragged into the equation. Now I could say that M2 is greater than M1. I don't have to say that. That would come out in the wash, the, the effects of that. So let's see. For the case of m equals 0, so we just want the acceleration of the masses m1 and m2. So we'll stretch out the pulley. No need for tension. So that the force F2 due to M1 is due to gravity. Gravity pulling this one down. And gravity pulling that one down. But pulling down effectively means that F2, F1 is minus M1G. Working that way, right? So now we add up all the forces. Now the total mass of the system is M1 plus M2. So the total mass of the system types times the net acceleration will equal the sum of the forces on this object because this is what we do. If the system has a total mass, m total, its net acceleration results from the summing of the forces on it. So now we can add up these guys here. We get that expression so we can solve for a. And that's the acceleration. The difference between the two masses and their sum times the acceleration due to gravity is the acceleration of the system. Now let's put a slightly different twist on the problem. Get your heads around that. Now, suppose there's a force that generates a torque on the pulley. Now, if you want to twist the pulley to get it to moving, you're required to have this force. We'll call it the torque force. But actually, this force is going to operate in this direction. Because the masses moving this way have to overcome this torque, right? So that's going to be the F torque. We need to find it. So the force due to the 
torque has to be included in the summation of our forces. Yeah? Now from our previous kinematics equations, remember that the tangential acceleration is given by R alpha. So therefore then alpha is A over R. So we can put that in here. I, A over R is the torque force. And I is a half m R squared. And that's what I get. Okay? But what's the force due to the torque? The force due to the torque is given by this. The radius and the force are at right angle to each other, so that the torquing force is just given by RF torque. So F torque. It's just torque over R. But here is the torque. So that the, for the force due to the torque, the resistant force, F torque, that has to be overcome, that has to be included in our equations here, is just a half MA. So now we write up all our equations. I'm going to clean the board. M, of course, is the mass of the pulley. Have you got that? Now, the sum of the forces still adds up to being the sum of these masses times their net acceleration. This is not uh, included as a mass, right? It's the torque force is completely covering it. That's what we get. Let's put in for all these forces. Now the force due to the torque, the twisting force needed to twist the pulley here, is going to be a resistant force. So I can write the sum of our, our equations of motion that. Now let's simplify them. I'll bring this over to this side. And now we can solve A. And that's the acceleration times g, of course. So that the effect of making the pulley non-zero in mass just introduces the extra term, a half mass of pulley times over there, the g. See? All right. That's it. Um, yeah, I've divided both sides. Now we can hit the whole problem yet another way. Another way will be using Lagrange's equation. So let's clean the whole board. I'll keep the, um, well, let's see what I need.
So, for Lagrange's equation, we have the Lagrangian first. First of all, we need the total kinetic energy of the system. Let's call this displacement x, right? The displacement of this cord as it moves uh, in this direction is x. So that the kinetic energy is m1 x dot squared plus m2 x dot squared, which we'd be adding them together, is m1 plus m2 x dot squared. But what else? We have this mass m. It's kinetic energy. Kinetic energy of rotation is a half i omega squared. squared over r squared. And don't forget, I for a cylinder is a half m r squared. So I can have our full, full kinetic energy simplified because the R's cancel out. And straight away I see the presence of the extra half times the big mass. Now we look at our potential energy. Well, the potential energy is just the potential energy of the two masses. Well, the potential energy is M one G H one plus m1 g h2. Sorry, 2. So we have m1. Now I'm not sure if that sign is the wrong way around, but let's see. Now the displacement h1 and h2 are the same, and in fact they're equal to x, our displacement. So L equals t minus v is going to be t minus this. So that's our situation now. I'm going to clean the board because all I have to do now is apply Lagrange's equations and see if we get the same result as before. Now, try and make this clear. We don't need this either. That's the Lagrange's equation for the situation.
Now the L by dx dot is going to be this one here. And d by t dl by dx dot, this term here, is going to equal this dl by dx, and dl by dx is just this. Now I should have uh, dl by dx. m2 minus m1, and I could be out by a minus sign here. So now I can solve for um, g. I left out the g. Now this x double dot is the acceleration of the system, so we can solve for the acceleration. And I get an expression like the one that we had before. All right. So I may have dropped a sign somewhere. I, sometimes people make mistakes with this object here. Uh, let's see if I've done that. Yes, I dropped the sign here. Uh, the negative of this here, minus, no, no. Actually, okay, I'll check that later. You guys can check for that one. See, where you, see if I missed a negative sign in there somewhere. 